1905. 1905 Kansas race clash. Trouble follows attempt to disarm Negroes. Whites patrol streets. Negroes reinforced from outside gather in one section. Attempts to disarm blacks results in dozens revolvers of revolvers being aimed at chief of police. Whites with rifles rescue him. Negroes were armed at the outset to prevent lynching because of an assault on a white woman. Attempt to disarm blacks results in dozens of revolvers being aimed at the chief of police. Whites with rifles rescued him. Negroes were armed at the outset to prevent the lynching because of an assault on a white woman. Nineteen oh five, man. Nineteen oh five, man. Kansas, Coffeeville, Kansas, April 12th, 1905. A race war is imminent here as a result of an assault by a Negro upon Miss John Griffin, Miss John Griffith, a white woman, the wife of a machinist. Trouble was narrowly averted today and tonight whites and Negroes are under arms in anticipation of a clash between the two races. The mayor today issued a proclamation ordering that all citizens disarm. Okay? The mayor ordered a proclamation issued a proclamation that all citizens disarm. All. The mayor issued a proclamation that all citizens disarm. Mm. Interesting. And, this, and at the same time, many special officers were sworn in. <laughs> he was deputizing motherfuckers. Okay. Armed to prevent lynching. Since the attack upon Miss Griffith, the Negroes have been arming to prevent the lynching of any innocent Negro. Today, an attempt to disarm a number of blacks resulted in a dozen revolvers being levied at the chief of police Smith's head. Other Negroes rushed to the scene, but a body of whites stopped them with leveled rifles. The leader among the Negroes was choked into insensibility and the others were subdued. The Negro who assaulted Miss Griffith is still at large. So we had a no snitching policy back in 1904, 1905, whatever the fuck. No snitching. Mm. 
Nine Negro ringleaders were arrested this afternoon, and thereafter, the other Negroes began to leave the streets. At five o'clock, six more Negroes were arrested without trouble. 400 deputies were sworn in today with orders to shoot on the site on the slightest provocation. The whites are determined to all the bad Negroes here once and for all. And on patrol in the streets, there are over 200 tough Negroes in this city. <sighs> there are over 200 tough Negroes in the city and they think they are being imposed on. 200 of the best citizens are acting with the police force. 15 of the captured Negroes were sent this evening to the county jail at Independence. So what do you guys think about that, man? The race, the race battle in Kansas in 1905, man. What is, what is your takeaway from that, man? What's y'all takeaway from that, man? This race battle in 1905, man. I'm curious to know what you guys think about that. A woman got lynched. The Negro who lynched her, he's in the wind. He's gone. He's on the, he's on the run. The Negroes who stayed in the town, they gathered up all their guns and got ready for war with the white people. They knew the white people was going to be mad. That once again, a son, a son man had defiled one of their beautiful flowers. The chief of police tried to disarm all the blacks. Meanwhile, he was deputizing every white man in the county. <laughs> the blacks were like, hell no. Nah. What should the white people have done here, man? What should they have done? And make sure you continue to hit the like button. Continue to smash that like button as you come. That looks like it might be in my wheelhouse. Oh, man. It, it was all downhill from here. Yeah, did you catch the whole um, story? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was, okay. All, it was all downhill from here, right? I yeah, man, it seemed like it was downhill a little bit earlier, maybe like about uh, 40 years earlier than this, something happened, but, you know, this wasn't a good thing. You, you, you know, it was downhill. What was that year that the sister wants to make the new Independence Day? They made a book about it? What was it? Uh, 16... Juneteenth? Juneteenth? No, no, no. 1619. 1619, yeah. Yeah, it was all downhill from 1619. Yeah, man. Yeah. I fucking doubt. So yeah, uh, what should the, it seem like the, the blacks held the ground, man? Yeah, uh, they did all right. My um, I I got I assume they were wiped out, you know, to a man by <laughs> like you know the army, right? The white supremacy army. Yeah, they dropped bombs, man. Yeah, <laughs> glided <laughs> over and dropped some bombs. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm so good. I'm surprised the pro blacks, the you know FBAs, don't tell this story a little more. Well, well there's hundreds of stories like this. They got to right. pick yeah. one. Um, even June, what's it? What's the um, uh, Tulsa? Even that started like this. Um, but there was a there's a there's a twist in the story. Negroes reinforced. The chief of police Smith has been notified that a gang of Negroes from Indian territory armed with Winchesters came in tonight 
on a 1030 train. But they had cell phones back then. <laughs> Shit. Got them coalition <laughs> forces. Yeah, how did they learn? Or how did the niggas, the Negroes know that this was happening? Well, they they could hear them from a way off. Okay. Um, 12 Negroes armed with rifles rode into the city an hour ago. Negroes are mobilized in the north part of the city. <laughs> and all this is because a, a son man who's now on the run, no one knows where he's at, raped a white woman. <laughs> Your but report you know about what? the Negro uprising has been received, General. You are to proceed to Kansas, Coffeeville, and dispatch those Negroes with all due force by any means necessary. That's what happened, right? Uh, I don't know, man. It's not looking like that. But he, here's the funny thing, though, man. The fact that the Negroes, like, soon as they felt some tension, they started, like, Negroes from everywhere started coming to the town, and they all had guns, and they all was ready to, you know, hold it down. That may be a reason why that Sun Man felt... Um, he felt confident enough that he could rape a white woman in 1905. Because if it was like, like we could say, if you had to take your hat off and crunch it up and put it on your chest, you wouldn't be raping no white woman. Presumably. You know, you know, maybe the Sandman were onto something when they, you know, you know what? Oh man! Yeah, when no, they disarmed y'all. Totally so. Oh God! Yeah, technically, technically, that was that was that was serious disarmament, man. Um, so let's let's go back to and shout out to Hezekiah News and Films. This is the channel that I get a lot of my history videos from. This brother, he a hood dude from Baltimore, man. This dude, I mean, I don't know how he does it, man. Who is dude. it? Is it Taz? Uh, no, this ain't Taz. I, I got I got some video stuff on Taz channel that I want to get to too. But this is um Hezekiah um news and films. What what's his deal? Is he like a pro black or what is oh yeah, yeah, definitely. They they, they think that this stuff is showing how right. he was white. <laughs> the, the fighting spirit. Yeah, yeah. They see it from a different lens. Like we're like looking at the same event from opposite yeah. sides. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look. To be fair, I I also see the fighting spirit in the Sun Man. It's just that they like to fight, you know, the helpless. Mm. Now they're de delivering fusillades in schools instead of, you know, sheriff offices. Salute to LR LRS. Eighteen ninety eight. Miners' fierce fight. Union men and Negroes. Firing volleys in the streets. Hundreds of shots exchanged. Colored men armed with Winchesters and others with shotguns and revolvers. After five minutes, fusillade Negroes were driven back to the stockade outside the town. More trouble expected today. Governor Tanner to be asked for a militia. Beginning of trouble, firing volleys at each other, more fighting looked for. Okay, so this was 1898. Okay. In Pana, Illinois. You know where that is, Wicked? You said Anna? Pana. Mm, no, no. Union, okay, so it says, it says, um, September 28th, striking Union coal miners and imported Negroes engaged in a pitched battle in the main street of this city tonight. Several hundred shots were exchanged. No one was wounded in the ranks of the Union men. The blue and the Negroes, black. Yeah. The Negroes were driven back from the city to their stockades, carrying with them 
it is believed the number of wounded comrades. One of the Negroes is reported to have died soon after reaching the stockade. Desultory firing continues at midnight in the vicinity of the stockades. The trouble which has been narrowly averted between the striking coal miners of the city and the Negroes imported from the South to work the mines was precipitated at 8.30 o'clock this evening. As usual, the Negroes, <laughs> as usual, the Negroes from the stockades at the Springside and Penwell mines were making demonstrations on Second and Locust Streets, the principal streets of the city, by parading heavily armed. Okay, so they said the Negroes was parading around downtown heavily armed. As usual, he said, as usual, like this is what they did. Uh, this is a little Parade. different from what we've been told. <laughs> yeah. Parading around heavily armed. <laughs> right. Per <laughs> usual. You know, I, I think the glider should just let put an end to that victim card then. That victim, the victim card's non void. Oh, man, this is crazy. Um, so it says the union miners were in session at their hall where a Chicago labor leader was speaking. One of the Negroes appeared at the foot of the miners hall and engaged in a quarrel with a union white miner. So the white guys are having like a, a, a meeting with the labor leader in a, in a hall in a, like a, a building or whatever, you know, town hall. And boom, here comes this Negro out of nowhere, comes in there and with all those white people starts starts a quarrel. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Like, this is... Yeah. We were worse back then than we are today, man. Right, right. You know, I, I know, I know what happens next. I they hang them, right? <laughs> well, let's see, man. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I, I haven't read this yet. Oh, um, great. Just notice how they don't capitalize black nowadays. They do. It's just a very stark difference between then and now. Mm. Well, it says. One of the Negroes appeared at the foot of the miners hall and engaged in a quarrel with a union white miner. Officer Samuel Smith immediately arrested the black and was escorting him to jail when he was closed in by a posse of Negroes <laughs> who pointing their revolvers at Smith threatened to kill him if he did not release the prisoner. This is the second straight story where they trying to arrest the Sun Man and black folks is like, nah. It's there are hundreds of these stories though. Like I've just been reading lately through a, like I've been reading a lot about this tree and it's just repeated over and over. And I'm waiting to find one where it's just like they were they were massacred for no reason, but it's always like, yeah, they got massacred blithely for no reason, uh, you know, after they started some fucking shit exactly like this. But but you know what I though Ironically enough, right, that this shit right here still goes on to this day. When the cops try to arrest a brother in the hood, the hood comes yeah. out and they try to free him sometimes, and they do successfully. Survive. Right, there's no difference almost. Well, being armed. What do you, what do you mean armed? armed? They were better armed back then. Yeah, they, maybe these motherfuckers are pretty well armed today. Well, yeah, they but in terms of the they were surely they more organized back in the day too, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely, way more organized. Yeah, they're in like a firing line and shit. Yeah, they, they, they I think pointing guns, like just rolling up on a cop, like, yeah, Yo, that's... let him go now or, you, or, you, or, you, or, or you go sleep with the fishes. I mean, it's like, they yeah. ain't doing that today. <laughs> no, but, but they, I'm telling you, I, they, they free the gang from the cops sometimes. Like, like, I, I, I've heard plenty of times today, I, in Chicago anyway. And I can't imagine it ain't the case in the rest of the black stand, but where like the cops are trying to take someone into custody and the hood pops out and they free them. 
Yeah, and but they all escape. Difference with, this, difference with this though, these guys are working. These are like these people that come up here to work. They're working in the mines, and they just like yo, they're just rolling around every night. They're going to the after I guess after their shift, they're going to downtown of the city and parading around with guns. Right, right. <laughs> and they, they, they the white man's events and just kicking the door open and like, yo, who wants smoke? <laughs> right. They they sound they do sound more organized, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I can't imagine the slum man was too much different than they, they are today. They probably was on the gang shit still. That stupid yeah. shit. It, it doesn't say that though. These articles back then was very. It, the, the journalism was better back then. There's with this very little opinion. These these are just straight facts. Journalism hadn't been turned into you know what I'm saying CNN and all that shit back then. I had dumb bullshit. How refreshing yeah. is that, though? Like, the, he immediately arrested the black. Wow. Isn't that nice? <laughs> so it says, it says if he did, if they, he, they threatened to kill him if he didn't release the prisoner. Um, he continued on his way to jail with the, so something happened. I can't read this last line. But I think it says, um, somehow he um, got out of that situation. He continued on his way to jail with his prisoner. Union miners and others, meanwhile, went to Smith's assistance and the Negroes were driven back. Smith took his prisoner to operator George V. Penwell's store and upon Penwell standing for the Negroes fine, he was released. So some he took this Negro to the store and the store owner paid the Negroes fine and then he released him. Yeah, he got out on bail, right? No, the, not even that. Like, <laughs> well, sort of, I guess. Maybe even then they were soft on the Sun Man. They took him to the store, and he's like, "I'll vouch for this Negro." <laughs> well, well, at least he didn't get an eye bond, right? Yeah, man. I mean, listen, man. This is really strange. I mean, he didn't even get him to jail. First, it was like he almost died taking him to jail. And somehow, the, the white guy stepped in, and then he ended up, t- he just said, fuck it, I'll just take you to the store, man. And uh, Maybe this, oh, I know what probably happened. Some man probably said, look, man, I know somebody that can pay my fine. And the uh, dude was right, like, all right, man, it's easier, because if I take you yeah. to jail, the sons are going to come down to the jail. So it was, it was probably a business decision. The 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 son man probably said, "Oh, King David, I ain't no bitch, I ain't no goofy." Yeah, something like that. I'm I'm finna stand on business. Yeah, they definitely stand on business. Before Smith had released his prisoner, however, the Negro posse had been reinforced and assumed a threatening attitude towards the white men. David McGavick, leader of the Union Miners clubbed one of the blacks over the head with a revolver, it is said. For half a block, McGavick forced the Negroes to retreat, and then a few shots were fired. The Negroes retreated, double quick to their stockades, secured rifles, returned to Locust Street, and challenged the miners for a fight. Y'all, they just won't stop, man. <laughs> If the gliders don't kill them, they coming back. That's what that's that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the gliders keep pushing them back and they keep coming back. They 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 probably uh kicked them out of that bar out of that, huh? They kicked out that song, man, and well they probably the gliders knew back then. They ain't the gliders of today, you know. They forgot the yeah. number one rule, never ask a sun man to retreat. <laughs> right, so these gliders from back in the day were like, nah, he gonna he gonna come back, he's gonna slide on us. So we gotta, you know. We gotta go. Yeah, Gladys, man, you guys had a rough love, yo. I I gotta look at you, Gladys, nowadays differently. They you y'all have it easy compared to what your ancestors had. Yeah, you gotta yeah, mute yourself. To somebody making somebody got a lot. When you come up here, man, if you if you're not muted, man, you 
You get every single fucking thing you're doing, man. Um, you can hear it. We can hear it. Yeah, yeah, man. And you assume that. Like, I do, and you're okay. Slaves. Damn. Yeah, I was on last night. How's it going? Are you, hey, you, you got a delay, man, or something, man? Oh, is it coming in delayed? Yeah, man, you just bust in talking, man. Go ahead, KB, man. I imagine Sorry. that uh, as the children of, of slaves and former slaves themselves, they would have a, a lot of animosity, a lot of resentment against the uh, gliders at the time. Just well, these, a cherry on these top. These are sons imported by like the LaQuint Dickey Mining Corporation. I mean, that's what I said earlier in the article. They, they, I found that interesting wording, imported from the South. Yeah, I mean, it's another world. It was another country. But here's the thing. It shouldn't matter that this that these people had animosity towards black. It shouldn't matter because the whites, I mean towards the whites, the whites should have been who gives a fuck if you got animosity towards us? We'll lynch you, we'll kill all of you. Not if they all have guns. Right, like I mean, I'm telling you, I the stories right of like the like the sun man, you know, putting his head down and cry, you know. Right. They're putting their head down to reach for their gun. Salute to, um, uh, so it goes, um, salute to, um, uh, hey man, you gotta mute yourself, um, new guy. Who is new guy? New guy, who the fuck are you, man? I was on last oh, night, do you remember? I can't, I can't, we covered like British knife crime, but like the time yeah, differences. I'm, I'm saying, I fell asleep. I don't think it's him with the mic, though. noise, man. Like, you gotta mute yourself if you're not talking. When you're making it like, I don't know what you're doing, welding or fucking doing carpentry in there, but so it's like, <laughs> right, you're doing right. a lot of fucking noise in there, man. You gotta, you got I've been on mute. I, I've been on mute. Is it, sorry, is it too I'm loud? At, I'm looking at the fucking. Too loud. Oh, hold on. Look, all right. Your, your mic is too loud. The other guy is the one who's uh, got the hype. Sorry, I'm gonna turn it down. I'm gonna sit down one second. Yo, yeah, yo, man. I. I Yo, I, I wonder if back then the sun man would his aim. I don't know. I doubt it, but who knows? I don't know. I, I think the sun man might have had better aim back then. I mean, they these these some bad sun men, man. Let's keep it a buck. Salute to um Osa the Healer. He says, This is quality entertainment. Hit the like button. Yeah, hit the goddamn yeah. like button. Yeah, but but what I'm saying though, I like if those sun men right here, right, were still shooting like running and like jumping as they shot, I wouldn't be shocked at all. Yeah, man. Salute to Osa the Healer, man. He's a uh, president of the um Op Nation NAACP chapter, man. Um salute um Fisherman's the ACLU. I mean the what's it called? A D Whatever fun this man the, is the MAGA. He's MAGA party leader. <laughs> he's a uh, he's he ADF. Is yeah. Fisherman big on Trump? He's the president, no. man. I don't no, know. no, I don't think so. Think so. He thinks Trump. He thinks Trump is a juice puppet. Who is um, it though? To be fair. Uh, the the opposing forces lined up on the street. The Negroes with Winchesters and the miners with shotguns. Rifles and revolvers. Neighboring business houses were immediately closed, lights extinguished, and citizens generally sought their homes. At the word of command, firing commenced. The first volley, it is said, came from the Negroes. <laughs> they, they probably hit a kid. Probably, they hit a kid that was eating breakfast. Yeah, man. Two, two blocks down, they they hit a they hit an elderly who, you know, her her grandkid was just born. Great news! Bam, the son man got him. It's just like glory, mm -hmm. man. It's just like <laughs> like it was twenty twenty four. The union men responded with a volley, and heavy firing continued for five minutes. Much of the shooting was wild and entirely harmless to the white men. Oh, there you go. So, yeah. <laughs> Much of the shooting was wild and entirely harmless to the white men who finally drove their enemies in full retreat to the stockades. A second encounter between whites and blacks occurred 20 minutes after the first battle near the Penwell Stockade, 
but the firing was scattered and it is not believed to have been a serious engagement. The miners had full charge of the business streets at midnight. Desultory rifle reports could be heard from the Pinwell and Spring Side stockades, but no person would venture into the streets near the mines, and very few are loitering about the business or residence sections. The Union miners say the battle of tonight is only a forecast of what may be expected to follow. They, they um, blame Operator Pinwell for the trouble. <laughs> so they blame um, the, the, the store owner who made the fine. <laughs> they owe the capitals to fucking mine. <laughs> it's his fault, man. Y'all, you glad it's never changed, man. Um, and say they will tomorrow swear out warrants charging him with inciting tonight's rat. So they're going to arrest Mr. Pinwell. God damn. Governor Tanner will be asked to send militia to protect property in this town and to remove the Negroes. Yeah, you send sending Nate Ways down there, General Nathaniel Ways. Oh, that's 18. That that was, um, this was, this was, Outside of Illinois in 1898. Check out 1895 in um, Virginia, Winchester, Virginia. 1895, Dateline 1895, Winchester, Virginia, March 14th. For the second time since the war, Winchester is practically under military control. On the fifth installment, Thornton Parker, colored, was arrested for attempted criminal assault on Miss Melton. God damn. Uh-oh. Cleota. Who could have seen that coming? Jesus Christ. Yo, this is this is crazy. What? Was she jogging? Uh, what are the eyes she was jogging? I think back in those days, they wore those big dresses and shit. Yeah, my word. Is that a Negro <laughs> in my parlor? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. is Good is, heavens, what are you doing? This is, this is, maybe she um, happened to be jogging just out of the blue. Maybe she went for a walk, you know what I'm saying? Um, or maybe he broke into the home. Um, she, yeah, she was by the way, strolling like, with her umbrella. Yeah, <laughs> she was frolicking with the umbrella. Uh, so, <sighs> on the um, Thornton Parker, colored, was arrested for attempted criminal assault on Miss Melton, living near Middletown. Parker, after being fully identified as the assailant, was placed in jail here indicted on Monday by a special grand jury, and his trial is set for tomorrow. Damn, they didn't play. They didn't play. They didn't try and tomorrow. We need that. We need that today, right now. <laughs> oh, my God. He got indicted immediately and tried. And it, oh, man. That's got to be fucked up, man. I mean, son, man, we got it so good, though. We got what? If you get arrested now, you're going to get a 2026 court date, man. Right. Shit. If, if you oh. commit a murder in Cook in Camp Fox County, you still get to go home and wait for court. Where I know you found this article from Hezakia. But do you know where to find old articles like this? This is pretty interesting to me, because you said this is from the 1800s. Yeah, I don't know, but I, I somebody in the chat can probably help you with that, man. I don't know. Could be but fake. I, we don't know. Yeah, that's true. Could, Could be, be Freemasons. Yeah, Freemasons. <laughs> yeah, this, it this often is. Maybe a false flag. Yeah, you know Project Mockingbird as well as anyone else. Yeah. I mean, look, the the idea of a strongman doing something like this just doesn't sound, you know, realistic. Right, true. I mean, Wicked, have you ever seen a strongman do this in person? Uh, no, no, and I can't say that I have. See, see? This now we're getting a, somewhere. Uh, this <laughs> may be a result of Project Stun of Shades. 
Yeah. Threats of lynching have been made and the Negroes of this city have expressed their intention to rescue the Negro and burn the town. Why, why they couldn't just rescue the Negro? <laughs> I hope this is from like Reconstruction and not the Confederate era because my God, you know this is like antebellum. Right, Jesus Christ, my God, Jesus Christ. Just rescue the Negro, man. Leave the town alone, man. Come on, man. Um, the Negroes paraded the town in groups on Tuesday night and were disbanded by the police force. The municipal officers decided to place the city under military protection tonight. Three companies, 75 men of the 2nd Virginia Regiment under Colonel J.C. Baker arrived here this evening and are patrolling the town. Everything is quiet tonight. In the presence of the troops, it is hoped will prevent further disturbance. Oh, they only did it to burn the town down. Just like, you know, they go loot the target. Like, that's the objective. Mm. You know, I, the, these sun men right here would be proud of what their descendants did in 2020. Yeah, that's the point. That's why he's posting these. <laughs> they would they, they were literally are in their graves, like, smiling. Like, yeah. Ancestors. Well, if you showed oh. this to sons now, they would be like, damn, they was, they was really with that shit back then. Damn, yeah, we got to represent. I they probably just run out in the street and burn something down just in memory. Yeah, they would get emotionally. They would get they, this would this would emotionally charge up some Negroes. Like they get you feel that they feel that pride within them. And so yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. But, and it was just like but, nonsense. But check this out, man. Um 1900, the year 1900, Negroes attack a village. Our mob gives battle without provocation to whites of Four Oaks, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina. Dateline, Charlotte, North Carolina. 1900, May 16th. Shout out to Marcy. 18 drunken Negroes, Negro oh, Railroad oh, hands, shit. and timber cutters. At least they was working. <laughs> 18 drunken quote Negro railroad hands and timber cutters all armed. They were just giving guns away. <laughs> Second Amendment, baby. Right, this is America. God damn. Um, Do you know about that British guy? All armed <laughs> descended upon the little village of Four Oaks yesterday threatening to kill every white man in the place. They immediately commenced to raise a disturbance. Somebody got some, well, oh, that's this I mean, guy, man. Jeez, somebody's mic is hot, yeah. Um, fuck me, man. Um, salute to um, Hot Fire, man, coming through once again. As Freak says, as Freak became a YouTube member, that's great, man. And Alexander Barron, he was around when this happened, man. Maybe we can get his eyewitness um, report on this, man. Yeah, he probably wrote the story, he fucking juice crew. <laughs> right. <Yeah>. Oh, shit. <laughs> wow. Um, I swear, I swear I didn't write the story. <laughs> Yeah, whatever, Mason. <laughs> Town policeman saw Sanderlin attempted to arrest a Negro for disorderly conduct and was mobbed by the Negroes who beat him into insensibility. So this is another time a policeman is trying to make an arrest and this time he gets beat into insensibility. Man. That's a term that kind of left the, the lexicon, man. But I think it means like it beat the shit out. He had <laughs> yeah, no sense. Sense. He was conscious. Yeah. I thought blacks were like more well behaved back then. Yeah, we were all led to believe that. Think again. Yeah, I just don't get why they didn't send them back. You know, like what was so hard about just sending them back? 
Well, well, they did. Well, they, they, they did send a bunch of them back, They're and they proceeded hard. to enslave the native Africans. I remember that, but talking about all of them. Though. I mean, have you tried to herd cats before? Yeah, and right, all the cats enough. like Winchesters and revolvers. Right, right. Oh. Yeah, six foot five cats with Winchesters and revolvers. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Uh, so <laughs> his face was badly disfigured, and he was bloody almost from head to foot. Some white men attempted to aid the policeman, but were knocked down or shot at. Much mischief would have been done by the Negroes who were all drunk, but for the concerted action of the white merchants and railroad employees of the town who attacked the Negroes. Several of the latter were wounded, but not fatally, and several white men were injured. The Negroes finally retreated, but sent word that they intended to visit the town and kill the policemen. The whites will be ready. Boy, Man, this is tough. what a difference Man. between then and now. Charming stuff. Yeah. Shit. It's just crazy. Um, the, the action of the Negroes was totally without excuse or provocation. It was a complete surprise to the whites. Uh. At least 15 or 20 people on both sides were injured. Mm, wow. Damn. Yo, Ag, somebody made a good point in the in, the, in like one of the super chats for you to read the comments, right? But if you do... If you do, just give me a second and sit down and buckle up. If you do read the comments on these uh, stories. Oh, God. Yeah. I read the comments on this one. Um, <laughs> the best. Salute to S Freak, man. Um, so here we go. Um, let's do this last one, man. Dateline 1901. Mexicans kill 15 Negroes. Battle between local authorities and a gang of railroad hands in Hereford, Texas, July 16th, 1901. Word reached this place yesterday of a pitched battle and wholesale killing between Mexicans and Negroes who are working on the new Rock Island extension in Mexico, 100 miles west of here. The trouble originated and the killing of a Mexican by a Negro some weeks ago. <laughs> Uh-oh. Who saw that coming? Yeah, who the phone care? Seems you know, like the, the sun man only got one Mexican. Well, like, every story, it seems like the sun started, though, which is, like, it just doesn't seem like people who were so marginalized and so you know, second class would keep starting. Seems they like violence, yeah. Seems it seems they've got like a propensity for violence. Yeah. An affinity. Yeah. Like, yo, Hello, can you hear me? Crazy. Yeah, go ahead, man. Hi, Ark. Hi. Uh oh man, you about to get blocked. Salute. <laughs> Is that a farm lover? No, 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 no I'm not. I'm I'm just no, I'm not like a porn bomb or anything stupid like that. I'm not on that. Well, no. fuck you. So what do you what, what do you gotta say, man? You show on the show up, man. Which what what is it, man? Uh, nothing. I've just been watching for Where a few weeks. And, uh, Where are you yeah. from? Oh, I'm from uh, Canada. Oh, okay, nice. How long have you been watching? Sorry, can you repeat that? How long, how long have you been watching this show? Oh uh, well, I mean, I've physically been watching it for three weeks, but I've been seeing it my whole life, if that makes sense. So it does. It makes perfect sense. Yes. Like. Yeah. <laughs> so but, let's, um, let's get what? No, no, keep going. Sorry. The, so the authorities undertook the arrest of the assailant, but his friends interfered, and they were obliged to withdraw. Again, somebody tries to arrest the son man for something, and the Negroes come in and don't let the police do it. It's like six for six tonight. With that Mate, story. I learned it as a kid with OJ Simpson trial. 
you know, just seeing like the like all the black community out on the street, like cheering him, like as he's like fleeing from the police. That's when I first learned about it. Mm. Shit. Last week, some thirty-five or forty Mexicans armed themselves with Winchesters and went after the Negro. A battle took place in which fifteen Negroes were killed. Damn. and several wounded. The casualties among the Mexicans cannot be learned. Fifteen. You, you damn um, you damn on burritos. Y'all got to handle some, man. Shit. I mean, look, if the gladiators, we're, we're going to get the gladiators a little bit more time, but if they don't get to it, then, you know. <laughs> Here comes, so you're going to start building pyramids in Chicago. What's the trick start sacrificing, You know, to the sun guy. Yeah, man. Um, These stories are crazy as fuck, though. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, very believable. Not surprising. Wow. Shit. 15 Negroes. I, I mean... And none I mean, of these stories were Negroes killed, except for messing with the Mexicans, man. 15... Well, like, they, they'll actually defend themselves. It's It's... They, like, they'll fight back, basically. <laughs> well, well, the comments gotta be lit on these stories, though, like, right? Yeah. Like they gotta be super pro, you know, black. We black and we proud, kind of shit, right? The trouble occurred at Spencer's Railing Road Camp near Liberty, New Mexico, in a sparsely settled portion of the territory where police officers are few and the law is not rigidly enforced. Okay, so let's see. Sounds like Chicago. Uh, yeah, let's see, man. Um, this one, this sister says, when I read history such as this, I realize people are just being people. Sounds like a revenge game. Large group of people activity. This one says, sounds like it was between black railroad workers and the company men who were in this case Mexicans because it was down there. Sounds like a labor dispute that the paper is making it appear like it's on strictly racial basis. Um, let's see. Uh, I want to see what they, they these these Negroes are not um, too incensed about this one. Let's see what the yeah. comments on when the, when the white people. Right, right. <laughs> what are the they, ones of the white people? Do? Let's see what they say about that. Uh, this this is not good. very shade room like. It says, make me feel good when we hear the true nature of my people. Mm, Black folks ain't cowards. It's most evident when the playing field is even. The playing <laughs> field. Oh, boy. It says, all these stories have the Black man as the aggressor. It usually ends up with Black man going to jail while the white man looks like the victim. Sad world. We Innocent know. little angels getting persecuted for no reason. You know? right. right. Innocent little angels getting lynched for no reason. You still, still got to turn your mic down. You still got to turn your mic down. Too loud. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of yeah. hot, bro. The British yeah, guy, is your your mic's kind of loud. Man, I'm trying um, to get in the setting. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I'm mute in between. Jeez, man. Um, yeah, we'll get to some of these later, man. But let's let's go to modern times, man. Um, salute to everybody, man. Make sure you hit that friggin' like button, man. You get this nowhere, man. Um, I don't know, maybe you do. I don't know, maybe. Who knows? Um no, you get, no, no. Smash it like a some man attacking a white woman in nineteen oh one. An elderly white woman in nineteen oh one. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, it's 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 With crazy. a Colt revolver. Winchester. Like it. Yeah, we're, we're just out here. Um, yeah, rifle. We're out here just doing the most in 1901, man. We were, I think we were worse back then, man. They don't Probably have crime statutes. 